In Stoic philosophy, the wise person, the good person, is a philosopher who lives following nature. Such an individual only fears that they may fail to fulfill their moral responsibilities. They do not fear pain, death, poverty, or any of the vicissitudes of the human condition. Their only fear is that they might let themselves down and be less than a complete human being. Marcus Aurelius, a key figure in Stoic philosophy and renowned for his work meditations, epitomized greatness unlike any other in history. This isn't your typical self-help spiel, but the Stoic principles Marcus expounded upon offer potent remedies for many modern-day tribulations. As Roman emperor from 161 to 180 AD, Marcus held unrivaled power during the Pax Romana era. Despite the prevailing hedonistic expectations for emperors, Marcus chose virtue over indulgence throughout his 19-year reign. Meditations, although originally his journal, reveals Marcus's profound insights into navigating life's complexities. Despite its unassuming format, meditation stands as one of the most profound literary works ever penned. Marcus advocated for living in harmony with nature, not just the natural world, but also aligning with the universal order. He believed that humans, like plants and animals, have to fulfill their inherent potential and strive for virtuous excellence. Accumulating wealth or seeking external validation was never Marcus's aim. Instead, he viewed fulfilling one's moral duty as the pinnacle of human achievement. In his view, the darkest place one could sink to was failing to live up to their fullest, most virtuous potential. Ultimately, he teaches us that while we can't control external circumstances, we have full agency over our reactions. True greatness lies in weathering life's storms with unwavering virtue and fulfilling our inherent duty as humans. Marcus Aurelius was an emperor, so while he might have enjoyed sitting around writing all day, that wasn't his job, and he didn't write much. He had to deal with a lot of things and a lot of people. Above all else, Marcus believed that evil, wicked, or just somehow bad people were simply part of our universe. Asking the world not to present you with these people would be like asking a vine to exist without thorns. It's ridiculous. Marcus simply says that bad people exist, and in your life you will encounter them. Marcus believed in kindness, though, and he believed that people never want to do the wrong thing. Instead, when people did the wrong thing, it was simply out of ignorance. You can try to teach these people, sure, but it's just not always going to be an option. So we can't control the universe sending us the immoral or the wicked or the lazy, and if we can't also help these people, which usually we can't, we just have to put up with it. To do this, Marcus says you should look inward. He writes to himself, Hey, Marcus, you've got faults too. Who are you to judge? Maybe you have different faults than these so-called bad people, but Marcus, you have your faults nevertheless. In a different conversation on a different day, perhaps you, Marcus, would be the ignorant one. And Marcus, it's possible that you just don't understand. He tells himself, Hey, you can't even be sure that they are doing the wrong thing. The thief who steals to feed his family isn't wrong, you just don't understand. And often in life you won't understand, and you won't know that you don't understand. So again, don't judge. Ultimately, Marcus Aurelius believed that we were all born for each other. Above all, he reminded himself that this is the natural order. A tree grows fruit so animals can eat animals die so that worms have food. Just like in the natural world, we are all made to help each other. That is again our duty. The only true failure in life would be to abdicate this responsibility. So Marcus, you better do it, and you better do it well. We all go through adversity, and Marcus Aurelius was no exception. But just like encountering bad people, Marcus realized that encountering adversity is simply part of the human condition. Again, you can only control what you can control, so don't pray for bad things not to happen. That is a fool's errand, Marcus told himself. Those things are going to happen, and there's positively absolutely nothing you can do about it. But what you can control, Marcus, is how you react to them. You can control if you are ready to meet adversity when it comes, and it will, Marcus says. You know that it will. When that day arrives, don't be sad because something bad happened. Don't feel bad for yourself, don't mope. Instead, feel fortunate that you have the tools and the spirit to make it through unscathed. Marcus tells himself to bear these events as a brave man, to go through adversity with bravery and come out on the other side. 
when you do realize that this supposedly bad thing was not bad at all, it was simply an opportunity to persist, to rise above and to keep going forward. Marcus Aurelius says, when these events come, don't complain. Act and endure. You can either endure something or you can't. So what happens if and when that unendurable thing comes your way? Don't disgrace yourself, Marcus, he says. All men die, but not all men die complaining. Marcus Aurelius was a man of enormous wealth, but he did not believe this was inherently a problem. Marcus did not vilify material possessions like some other philosophers have throughout history, but instead he was cautious with his relationship with the things that he owned. Marcus Aurelius could have had anything he wanted money, a house, art, and wine, but he chose not to. Instead, he said, Marcus, don't dream of physical things that you want. These are meaningless, they don't fulfill your potential. Only you can do that. Reflect on what you do have and value these things. Remember how much you would want them if you didn't have them. But be careful, Marcus, not to value them so much that you would be despondent if they just disappeared. They don't matter. They're nice, but they don't matter. They don't improve you as a person. They don't make you more virtuous or more kind. Your potential is not accumulating things. Marcus, no. The human potential is higher than that. You must live in. In alignment with natural principles, Marcus Aurelius dedicated much of his contemplation to the concept of death. Indeed, it would be remiss to discuss his philosophy without delving into his thoughts on this matter. Marcus's perspective on death was straightforward, it's inevitable, regardless of personal preferences. He repeatedly reminds himself that it's beyond individual control, urging against wasting time on fear or anxiety about mortality. Just as nature mandates us to live virtuously, assist one another, and strive for our utmost potential, it also decreases our mortality. Death, Marcus believed, is a natural duty. Therefore, while living, one should embrace kindness, fulfill their role in the natural order, and ultimately accept death as an integral part of this role. Marcus Aurelius, along with other Stoic philosophers, emphasized the distinction between pleasure and lasting happiness. While external factors may bring momentary pleasure, true happiness is found within, through a life of virtue and continual self-improvement. The greatest failure is falling short of one's potential, as greatness is inherent to human nature. Mm -hmm.